Howdy folks and welcome, I hope this finds you well. Today I'll be reviewing Age of Mythology Retold, and I can confidently say if you enjoyed the original Age of Mythology, you are going to love this game. I started playing Age of Mythology back in 2003 in my grandparents' basement. I will try my best not to put on my nostalgic glasses for this review, but it will be a little hard. What I love about Age of Mythology is that it merged the grueling tactics of Age of Empires and added that mythological fantasy element to it. If you don't know anything about the Greek pantheon, Norseman fables, or Egyptian gods, that's okay. This game is still epic, and there's a huge campaign for you to delve into. And for those of you who did grow up on those stories, there are so many references, callbacks, jokes, that I couldn't help but fall in love again with this game. That ship belongs to Odysseus. From the looks of it, Poseidon hasn't been kind to him. Bring us around. We'll go ashore and see if there's any sign of him. <laughs> If Odysseus landed here, at least he's eating well. It's interesting they use the word retold instead of remastered, enhanced, remake. I mean, honestly, you need to study these terms. From what I can tell, retold tweaks a lot of what the originals had, but it still feels like the original. And that's a great thing because it's one of the best RTSs of all time. And here's why. Let's start with the gameplay. If you've played any Age of Anything, you'll know what to do. The game is about gathering resources and producing armies to defeat your opponents. Simple, right? Oh my god, what's happening? Retold's gameplay is buttery smooth. From the moment you start a match or campaign level, there is an ease and complexity that never gets old. At the start, the ease is producing villagers and sending them simply to chop wood, gather food, or mine some gold. But as the game goes longer, the levels get more complex. You're going to need to shift workers around, upgrade technologies, build buildings, and more, all while fighting your opponents. And that's where the complexity comes in. Retold reminds me of an RPG almost. There's just so many choices that the player can make. Each faction leader having different abilities, units, god powers. Then you have you and your opponents choosing gods between the ages, all coming with different units and powers. And I have to say, throwing down meteors or lightning storms on your opponents is super satisfying. They also rework the god power so you can do them multiple times, which is a nice touch. Learning counters can be advantageous. Some units are really good against infantry and cavalry, but are very bad against mythic units. There's some mythic units that destroy infantry and can't kill cavalry. There's so much room for experimentation when doing builds that there's just hours of custom games waiting for you or multiplayer games that you can test stuff out in. Or you can play the campaign and screw around with the cheat codes. They added all the cheat codes from the original and yes, O Canada is still in there, and it's awesome. This is Troy's main forward base. We'll need siege or heavy myth units from Zeus to wipe it out. The tech tree also reminded me of an RPG because you could stack some insane combos. Plus with the god powers and armory, you really felt the tangible change in your power level throughout any game. I have to say this now because I don't know where I would have put this in the script, but Retold does a great job at balancing the audio, the visual, and the gameplay together. I mean, when you cast a storm down, you hear the dun 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 and you're seeing your hoplites getting blown to smithereens or a minotaur freaking pile driving someone. Um, and you hear it and you feel it and you experience it. And you're also like, oh, I spent 150 gold on that unit. Jeez. It's beyond epic and your actions truly have ramifications, good and bad. One thing I do struggle with when it comes to RTS games is how the campaign sort of restarts you every level. 
I will say Retold does a fantastic job at mixing the macro missions with the micro. What I mean is not every mission is going to be, oh, Arcantos, build a base here. No, there were some really good missions that had you needing to uh, use your troops wisely. Also, there were some set pieces that blew me away. I mean, seriously, this was really cool. Arcantos, the wall is down, but we have an army on our tail. I suggest we move north up the pass, quickly. You're right, we cannot fight a force that large. Retreat to the north, now! Overall though, if you have not played the campaign, do so. It is so worth it. Look, it's no masterpiece theater, but I kind of love the characters anyway. And that's a good segue into the sounds of the game, because I didn't mention that Retold does a fantastic job at blending everything together. But what about the individual sounds? I would be amiss if I didn't mention the voice acting in the game because they changed the voice actors from the original. I understand this. I'm sure the audio files were not what they or not what we expect. Um, it is jarring sometimes, especially with Arcantos sounding like Stan Smith from American Dad. It is no use. Why does Poseidon not respond? I may not have every answer, but if you have questions, you can always ask me. I don't know why, it just reminds me of that. Some of the voice actors do a decent job, but on the overall, I wasn't too impressed. Boots of the morn, from the temples where the yellow gods shut up their eyes in scorn. I will warn you this once. However, every other sound in the game is freaking fantastic. What game allows you to play the drums while clicking your buildings? This is just awesome. I love how each creature has a distinctive sound, especially when it comes to my Minotaur's pile-driving hoplites. It just sounds good. <laughs> the music is also a top 10 soundtrack. I don't know what it was about the 90s, early 2000s RTS games having just banger soundtracks, but um, this one is no exception. If you're going to play the campaign, put on some decent headphones and enjoy the huge swath of different audio cues and music. Retold's graphics look stunning, but it also looks like how I envisioned it when I was playing back in 2003, which is a very cool feeling. It means the developers really had a goal for their design and aesthetic and knocked it out of the park. I loved being able to zoom in and out of the battlefield at a whim. There were so many animation details or little things that you could just get caught in watching a battle. Also, Age of Mythology is something that I absolutely love in RTS games, that being upgrades showing off on your units. When you upgrade to silver weapons or iron weapons, you see it on your hoplites. When you upgrade the Colossus or the guy with the gigantic sword and you have the choice of silver or gold, you see that and that adds to all of the player choice and like that again those feelings of the your actions having consequence and then there's the story which i won't go into any spoilers i'll just give a general feel of what kind of journey that you'll go on if you haven't played you play arcantos the admiral of atlantis after completing the tutorial mission, you're told that Atlantis has lost Poseidon's favor and you're the admiral to get it back. Hence, that is your odyssey. Another message from Poseidon Arcantos. His creatures helped the pirates. Father, they stole the trident. What? Yes, it was stolen during the fighting. Come on. There could not be a clearer sign, Arcantos. We are losing Poseidon's favor. We must act. I will go to Troy as you ask. I'm going to get that trident back on the way. Zethos, take supplies aboard and get the men together. We're setting sail. And like any good Greek myth, 
nothing goes right at first. Throughout Arcantos' journey, he'll go to a ton of, like, best of places. You have Midgard, you have the Underworld, you have Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. It was great exploring new areas, and the graphical enhancements just lend itself to the storytelling. I have come upon the Earth, and with my two feet, taken possession! You'll also be teaming up with a bunch of heroes that might or might not be a part of the actual mythology. I know some are, maybe some aren't. Um, it kind of feels like you build an Avengers team, which is really cool at the end. You and your team will be fighting against Gargarensis, or the Cyclops. I, he's a typical villain. I will say his voice acting was lacking, but... You interrupted me in Greece, escaped the underworld, and arrived here before me. There is no way you did this on your own. I will know which gods support you. No! The game has two other campaigns, where you can follow Brock and Eitri, I hope I'm saying that right, and also the Titans campaign, which was the expansion pack for the original game. There's like 30 to 50 hours of single-player gameplay that is right there on purchase, and that's not even talking about the custom games or the mod scene that they have. I mean, it's built into the game. I modded voice lines from the original like that, and it was implemented. Uh, that is a really good sign, especially for more custom games and things along the way. One minor gripe, and I understand why they're doing this, is that there is a day one DLC for a faction. Now, if you've watched any of my opinion pieces, you know that I am not a big fan of paywalling new content when it comes to multiplayer games. I feel like that gives an unfair advantage to people that have the money to shell out for a better, newer character, because the game developers need to make money. And then there's the caveat that, yes, the game developers need to make money on a live service game. I love the multiplayer in Age of Mythology, and for servers to work, they need to pay money to whatever cloud service or whatever servers um, they do. And I understand needing to make a little bit more money, or if someone wants to buy the DLC, they are available to. But I wouldn't. I think there's enough there, and if you do really love the game, then the DLC will be there and probably discounted within three months. One thing about the mods is that it's incompatible to play online since everyone will have to have the same mod list and when you're just going on random lobbies to play 5v5s, no one's going to have the same list. So it's okay just to disable it if you want to go into multiplayer. Hopefully at a certain point, only aesthetic mods will be, you know, you'll be able to use aesthetic mods or the voice line mods. Uh, but at the time, you can just easily just click uh, deselect from the mod list if you want to play multiplayer. Highly recommend multiplayer too, even if you don't know what you're doing and there's some asshole telling you, oh, you should have been doing this because I played from 2002 to 2015 in the North ELO competitive match. Doesn't matter. These people don't matter. Just have fun. Learn the game. Learn, learn a build. Be comfortable and have fun because the 5v5 games are absolutely wild. Um, and if you don't die within the first like 10 minutes, uh, they can go on for a while, and it's pretty awesome. And holy Zeus, that's about it. This is one of the most consistent and heartwarming retellings, remasters, remakes, enhanced editions that I've ever played. And you can tell the developers put their hard work and time into this. Retold is not just a love letter to the original game. It's something more. It's a spark that hopefully with the re-engagement with Age of Empires online, mythology or Age of Mythology will have that occurrence too. And it would be great to see a um, competitive multiplayer scene. From the amazing visuals to the sounds to the odyssey of a journey that you can go on in single player, he told is a masterpiece and is what remakes should look up to, especially in the RTS field. 
I'm so excited to see what the developers do for balancing in the future and continue this community that I think is going to be going somewhere. If you're looking for an RTS to try out, I would highly recommend Age of Mythology. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my review. That is not lost on me. I would love to hear your thoughts about the Age of Mythology or Age of Empires games. Are you playing online? What's your favorite faction? Did it get you into Greek mythology like it sort of did me? Let me know in the comments below. Again, I truly appreciate you and this community that we're a part of. Honestly, it wouldn't mean half as much without all of the comments, thoughts, and opinions that you guys give. If you really enjoyed the video, check out my channel. There's something there for everyone. I make sure of it. And, as always, see you next time.